everything in the bowling field now is imported. Yeah. That's and a different someone, world now. Someone else got, then uh, since you just started back, you haven't run into it yet. And I don't know of any lanes in Cincinnati that have, uh, you recall, the refinishing of lanes right. every uh, season. That's right. Now, they don't do that now. They have a, a plastic material oh, you know. yeah. that, that they roll out oh. and put on the lanes. Mm. They don't even have to. And then you have your uh, synthetic plastic walls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like you said, I started back after 10 years. Stopped, I stopped bowling for 10 years. And I got back into a church league that's, that bowled every other week and everything. I'm, I'm not as serious as I used to be about bowling, but uh, I still enjoy it. And I still had that competitiveness, you know, even though I can't do it as well as I used to do. Uh, I think I could if I practiced a lot, but I don't practice. I just go out and bowl, which, you know, just for the fun of it. But I remember the years when, when we were really seriously into it. And uh, I remember some names of some, some guys and some ladies that uh, uh, well, were we just had, uh, fantastic bowlers. We had... Mike Quilling, oh, and yes. I know the question comes up, why Mike never, never went pro. Went pro. Yeah. Well, it, it's the underlying things that grow out of situations like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes you can make more money not being oh, yeah. a pro yeah. than being a pro. Especially when you live in Cincinnati with a honky tournament out at Western <laughs> Bowling, you could make twenty, thirty, forty thousand yeah, dollars go around bowling as an amateur and bowling other tournaments around the yes. country as an amateur yeah yeah you get, you don't need a sponsor but the uh, the biggest change in uh, bowling now uh, ABC this organization that wouldn't allow us to join mm -hmm. their organization uh, their membership has dropped but they look at the National Bowling Association, which we are now, mm -hmm. and they have dissolved ABC and WIBC, mm. which now they are USBC. Okay. We have always been uh, one organization for, the ma uh -huh, yeah. for male and female. And that's good, and now you're celebrating 70 years. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. 70 years of existence. I have to name some names, especially in Cincinnati, and you know more than I do, but I remember when I first started bowling, names like Lenny Gray, mm -hmm. Larry Shears, I bowled with Larry, Larry. he, was, he mm -hmm. was my favorite bowler, uh, he taught me a lot about bowling, uh, Popo Henderson, yes. uh, Rudy Dukes, mm -hmm. Mel English, Charlie Lewis, and like you said, the great Mike Whalen, he was in the book of, of a Guinness yeah, Book Guinness of World Records, records for uh, most 300s. Uh -huh. Right here in Cincinnati. Time, he had 65 300s. 65 300s, an amateur bowler. And Mike was, he was awesome. He was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And I could just go on. Now we have the younger folks, but, you know, Annette Ziegler. Yes. Uh, name some other female bowlers that were that Barbara were Fields. Awesome. Barbara Fields, yeah. <laughs> Uh, man, I, I mean, I can't recall all the names, but I want to say as many as I can because they deserve that kind of recognition. And that Ziegler won the national tournament. I think up to this day, uh, she's the only female Edith to win. Edith Davis. Michael, Edith Davis, right. Ruth Payne, we got to talk about Rose Ruth. Rose Holloway. Rose Holloway, I remember that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Annette Ziegler won the tournament, the National Bowling Association tournament in 1972. Mm -hmm. I remember that. She and I bowled on a team together out at, out at Bowling Mat. And then along comes this little guy who went to Denver in 1981, who really didn't even go out to attend, to, to bowl. And a, a guy in Michigan told him, bring your ball, we may have a spot. He was just going out to Denver because he wanted to go to Denver in 1981. And he took his ball and won the national tournament. You know who that was, don't you? <laughs> Me. <laughs> you forgot about that. 1981, I was the national scratch yeah. and handicap champion. At that time, that was the highest score that ever been shot. Okay. In, the, in the NBA tournament in 1981 in okay. Denver, Colorado. And I really didn't intend to bowl. I just wanted to go to Denver to party. You know, we partied a lot at the NBA. And uh, a brother up in Flint, Michigan, McDill. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mac McDill, he said, bring your ball, bring your ball. We might have a spot. And sure enough, I subbed and uh, won the whole tournament. Okay. And it's just, I've had, I mean, there's some memories that I have 
from uh, traveling back and forth. Eddie, uh, Eddie Young, uh, James Adams, Jim Long, Billy Long. Yes. Uh, uh, what's his name? The the thin guy. Uh, uh, William is his first name. I can't think of his last name. But we used to travel all over the country to all these different cities bowling and met all kinds of people all over the place. It was just a fantastic experience over that 20 years to uh, be involved well, it, in, in bowling. It's an experience to be uh, involved in an organization, uh, which I always say our organization, mm -hmm. and uh, be able to uh, do the things that you view and watch and sit back and watch others do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I recall so many just fantastic times that we had in different cities, all the friends we made. And you know, my running partner was Sam Ranford. Mm -hmm. He's still bowling. And the young guys, I call them young, uh, uh, Pete, Pete Ash's son, uh, yes. uh, Mike, uh, Mike, Mike Ash. Uh -huh. And uh, another young brother that uh, I know is an excellent bowler that I bowl with in the church league, um, Johnson, uh, Terrence Johnson. Okay. Oh. And you ought to see his little son. He's about this tall, and he's stroking the ball right well, now. Well, yeah, all of the, you know, we have a junior division. Yeah, yeah. And, Tell us about the junior ball, because I want to talk about Ruth Payne a little bit too. Yes, <laughs> Ruth Payne uh, was really now. If most people think that Ruth Payne started the juniors in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. but she did not. Who did? Because I thought Palmer. he too. Hattie Palmer. Okay. Uh huh. And Hattie went back to. Uh, Tuskegee to get, uh, finish another degree that mm -hmm. she had so that she could uh, get employed out at Princeton. Okay. She was a counselor okay. at Princeton. And Ruth Payne took over. Okay. And it was, it, uh, it exploded. Yeah. You know, oh, Ruth was fantastic. Her. She was uh, so dedicated the children, to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And she became the national yeah. director. Yeah. Yeah. And not just for Cincinnati. Right, right. And I work with Ruth on the board, the National uh, Scholarship, what do uh -huh. they call it? The Junior Scholarship National Program, Program, JPSP. SP, uh -huh. And uh, of course, I worked as the National Marketing Director for the National Bowling Association, too, from about, what, 80, 1987 to 1995. And that's really how I, how I got to know about the history of the organization. And the more I looked, the more I was just, you know, pleasantly surprised and shocked, really, that we had done so much in bowling. Well, we have, uh, in Ohio, uh, I don't know if you recall the 11th uh, president, uh, and he was the Ohio Commissioner, Lottery Commissioner. What was his name? Because I met him, we did a program together. What was his name? He was tall, dark-skinned. What was his name? Man, I have a picture of, of, <laughs> of him and myself. Because we did a, a, a junior scholarship program out on Reading Road at Raphael's, I think it was. Yes. He came down. Uh -huh. I he was think our his guest name speaker. Now. Yeah, he was a speaker. Uh -huh. Virgil. Right. Virgil. Virgil Brown. That's right, Virgil Brown. <laughs> How did you know that, Jim? <laughs> he's. Uh, Virgil Brown. Yeah. 90 right. year, he's 90 years he's old. He's 90 now? Wow. But you. You see him. I. They had a celebration. The juniors had a celebration mm -hmm. for him in Cleveland, and mm -hmm. uh, I went up. Mm -hmm. You ninety. Yeah. If you can look like that and wow. act like that at uh, ninety. <laughs> man, he's blessed. I've been blessed. Uh -huh. That's great. That's yes. great. We have known some some just many many people. We've seen a lot of uh, growth in the NBA. What would you say is the, the most significant uh, aspect of the National Bowling Association as far as your, your personal involvement? What would you say is the highlight of your involvement with the, the National Bowling Association? Well, uh, being on the uh, foundation since 1966 mm -hmm. and the charge of the National Bowling Association uh, after leaving Toledo, Ohio, and going to New York. Mm -hmm. The uh, national office was in Toledo and then they moved to New, to New York. New York. Okay. And uh, in New York, I don't think that we were large enough financially to keep an office. Hmm. On Park the, Avenue in no, New York. No, I remember the, that. Yeah, yeah. In New York. A high rent district. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so the charge became. Uh, 
we should find a building and then you know the building uh, uh, group was formed within the development foundation mm -hmm. that this was one of the charges of the development foundation mm -hmm. and we had a drive uh, in the it was in the 80s mm -hmm. and the Van Gordon uh, headed it up and then the national body itself started to uh, we've had about four groups that were supposed to out on the west coast the southern uh, mm -hmm. to find a building that okay. we could purchase you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was unsuccessful yeah. uh, each group and we were having the convention in Dallas, Texas, and the uh, Central, we have 30, in the Central, we have like 36 senators. Right, right. And they had a, held a caucus out in the hallway for doing the summer mm -hmm. board meeting. Mm -hmm. Then they called me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they said, we, because I was the trustee of the building fund right, that we were right. raising. And they uh, gave me the charge to find the building. Find the building. That, that's all they said. Find mm. the building. Wow. <laughs> now it really gets interesting. <laughs> and within that time, um, we were, they also voted uh, that some of the finance would come from the membership. Mm -hmm. uh, and that started the fun to grow. But anyway, uh, I was looking, mm -hmm. looked at many buildings, yeah. and not only in Cincinnati, but in Cincinnati. And I'm, I stumbled across a building coming out of General Electric Credit Union. Mm -hmm. and in Evendale. In Evendale. Uh -huh. and I uh, called Mr. Austin, Jim Austin, mm -hmm. the, the National Alternative Director, and uh, the chairman of the foundation, and had them to come out and look, come here mm -hmm. and look at the building mm -hmm. and see what they said. And right. So they said yes. And so after my negotiation with the company, the Millennium uh, Communication, uh -huh. Uh, company People that owned the building. The building. Yeah. We were successful in getting the That's building. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you, of we course, George sick. Wilson, I remember you two were really instrumental in putting that fund together yes. and holding on to it yes. and making sure that it was not spent for anything, anything else mm -hmm. other than to find that a building. building and to develop the organization further. And lo and behold, we have the national, national office, office in, Cincinnati. in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. That's a piece of information that most folks watching this it's do not a, know. The National Bowling national, Association National Office is here. I would say a national black organization has a building in Cincinnati. Right, right. On Reading Road, right there at Evendale. That's, that's amazing, Ruth. And that's a legacy for you. That's a legacy. I know you. You don't. You know. You. You. Have, you didn't set out trying to do that. But legacies are important. Uh, there are a lot of people who who spend their lives trying to be legends, but other people spend their lives trying to leave a legacy. And that that building is a legacy for you and for George, even though he's gone George. on. Uh, but uh, that that's just so commendable that what you did really is economic empower, empowerment bringing the national office of the National Bowling Association that was started in 1939, bringing it to Cincinnati, Ohio, one of its founding cities, and having much of the income that uh, is generated come through that office here in, city, in the city of Cincinnati. And you created some jobs. Mm -hmm. There's some people out there working exactly. in the building. <laughs> and that's what this thing is all about. And I'm just, uh, uh, just pleased to be able to let people in Cincinnati know that uh, as we walked through this historical uh, uh, journey of the National Bowling Association, it ends right here in Cincinnati with the national office being located here. Well, a very good uh, 
location Cincinnati. You have your airport. It's central, yeah. It's central, yeah, illegal yeah, located. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, we've had many conventions here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had the uh, national convention here. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. that it's just a, a good thing. And in, in conventions, you know, they bring money to, to cities that, they're, that they held in. And it, it's just a, a, a commendable thing that I think, and foresight that you and George Wilson had to say, we're going to do this. And it took you a few years, too. I remember Quite you were doing years. this for a long time. Quite but you never gave up. You stuck with it. And now we have the building and the national office and the jobs right here in the yes, city of Cincinnati, and that's great. I would love to see the National Bowling Association, as you well know that I, that I promoted when I was the National Marketing Director, to see the National Bowling Association be more prominent, to see it own some bowling centers that we could bowl in for our tournaments and pay ourselves, essentially, when we go out of town. I would see, I would love to see that as the next phase because the Bowling Association has been around now for 70 years. 70 years in yeah, 2009. We will June, what is the date? Uh, What's the founding date? Uh, June the 4th. June the 4th? Let's see. Nineteen thirty-nine or June 20th, something like that. I think it's uh, the 20th. No, it was uh, August the 20th, August 1939, okay. All right. in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, that that was the that that was the founding the date. date. Here we are in August 2009. It'll be 70 years old. Done a lot of fantastic we'll be things. Fort Lauderdale. You're going to Fort Lauderdale this year for the uh, tournament. That'll be in May. It's still held in May. Yes. All right. And where is the regional going to be in November? Thanksgiving. Uh, in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. All right, close to home, huh? <laughs> yes. Are you going to go up? <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, yeah. They named the uh, uh, mixed doubles tournament is the Lois Wilson. Oh, congratulations! So you have to go in it. <laughs> oh well, I'll just find me a part. Maybe me and you can go out and bowl. Okay. <laughs> The mixed doubles term is named after you. That's beautiful, Lois. That is that is beautiful. Like I said, that's an excellent legacy. You have definitely made your mark on uh, uh, bowling and on the city of Cincinnati. And like I said, it's, th this is information that, that I think is valuable to people, especially our young people, to see that there are some folks here in Cincinnati who have done some things that they didn't know about until now when they see this uh, that they can be proud of. In addition to all the other things, and I go back to the, the, the memories that I have and the people that I met, not only around the country, but specifically here in Cincinnati, uh, who played a significant role in, uh, in, in bowling, and especially in the junior, the junior bowling. And I remember, uh, uh, what's the tall guy's name with the big afro uh, that were James Jimmy Rucker, Rucker. <laughs> Jimmy Rucker, Jimmy <laughs> Rucker, always there, training those kids, uh, along with Larry Shears and... And others, I still have some old newspapers, the old uh, papers that Tony Fikes used to do. Tony Fikes, yes. of course, out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And of course, I worked with Perry Daniels and Eddie Jones when they were presidents of the organization. And uh, Cornell Jackson out of Washington. DC. And uh, of course, Jim Austin, the national tournament. Margaret Lee, the national uh, uh, secretary. All those folks I remember and, and just uh, recall all of the the, 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 the progress that we made through the years, but I still believe that we fell short by not buying and owning our own bowling centers, not just well, one. Maybe it'll happen. I, I, I pray that it will. I, I think that's the next logical step in the evolution of the National Bowling Association, because obviously it's not going anywhere. <laughs> 70 years, it's not yeah. going anywhere at all. Yeah. So, And to think about the pro bowlers, like you said, we need to be more visible in, in that as well. I remember Cheryl Daniels, the, yes. the, the female pro. I went out to meet her out in Chicago, and of course we had her at our celebrity bowling tournament. And uh, Kim Terrell, yes. you remember when she came, a pro bowler? She's still bowling, mm -hmm. from what I can I can see. And uh, we met uh, others in the, in our celebrity bowling tournament. Evander Holyfield, who loves the bowl, he came uh, down to Atlanta once. He didn't make it to the celebrity bowl. And uh, Pamela DePella, who's from Cincinnati, she's a movie star who came to join us in Chicago at the, oh, yes. at the National Solar. And Erica Alexander used to play on the Cosby Show. She was there as well. So we've known a lot of famous folks, not famous folks, and done a lot of things, traveled, met a lot of friends. And uh, I'm just just uh, pleased to, to be well, they, having uh, been involved in that. The local Senate, the Queen City Senate, 
it, with the junior uh, program, each year uh, we have uh, a banquet uh, giving out like uh, over ten thousand dollars in scholarships. Wow, man, it's up to ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Man, I remember we used to just do book scholarships. Yes, I know. I it's ten thousand dollars now, right here in Cincinnati. They have right to Is Henry Bracy still involved with the? T yeah, well, he's not. Uh, uh, not let's see. Last year was mm -hmm. his last year. Okay. Uh -huh. And yeah. we have a new president, new secretary. And, uh, Good. Uh -huh. Still rolling on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just pass the baton and keep yes. on moving, right? Yeah, and have you talked to Ruth Payne lately? I haven't. Uh, the historian came into Cincinnati, and he went. Now I told him where she uh, was living at this time, and I think Henry Bracy cared. Uh, took him, picked him up at the airport, and took him out, and mm -hmm. he interviewed her okay. for uh, some historical things yeah. that they wanted to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And I saw him in Louisville at a conference. I can't think of his name now. What's uh, his? From uh, from Toledo. Is he no, from? no, Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids. Right, Michigan, Grand Rapids. Uh, yeah, Michigan, yeah. Right. And he's going to kill me. I can't think of his name. If he sees this this recording, Asadana. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I know that's his name too. Uh, but uh, it, it's just been amazing how the baton has been passed. You think about people like uh, Leon Pierre, uh, uh, Levan Gordon, who's still involved. Uh, who's the brother in Indianapolis? Joe. Um, Joe King. Joe King. You can't forget. Is he Joe still King. around? Yes. Okay. Joe King was our uh, field rep. Yeah. Uh, when Joe came in, the organization was at about eight thousand. Mm -hmm. In two years, Joe had us up to twenty some thousand wow. members. I remember he was a dynamo. I met him one time. Yeah. One time at one of the uh, conventions. How many members are in the TNB now? We have about 25,000. 25,000 mm -hmm. active members. Mm -hmm. That's great. And 111 senates, senates. around the country. Mm -hmm. And Bermuda. Yes. Is Lionel Dowling yeah, still involved yes. in Bermuda? Yeah. I remember him. Yes. He kept inviting me to come to Bermuda. <laughs> I never was able to go. But uh, I was we just... hosted his uh, group here one year. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. They uh, take a tour of uh, the states mm -hmm. once a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, Lois, this has been informative. It's been intriguing. Uh, we started out with you at the Play Bowl. Now, a lot <laughs> of you folks watching now, some of you elders will remember the Play Bowl. Uh, the Ninth Street wide bowling. I remember Larry Shears used to tell me about the bowling, uh, bowling house down on uh, Chickering off Spring Grove. Was Spring Bowl? Yes, yeah, Spring Bowl. And there was another one out on Madison Road uh, in o Oakley Bowl. Was Oakley it, that Bowl. what it was? Oakley. Yeah, he used to bowl Oakley. out there a lot too. Oakley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I, as we it's, talked, I it's remember all this. It's an antique shop now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's, that's the, the, the trend that started in the 80s. The bowling center started closing. And like you said, those mega houses started popping up, and then they got too big because they couldn't mm -hmm. fill them, and they started losing money, and then they started going back down and decre decreasing the, the amount of lanes to try to find the ideal amount of lanes that could, that could turn a profit. Yeah. And at that time, I was working with, uh, in the early 90s, with, excuse me, Evander Holyfield, because he wanted, he loved bowling. So we presented a proposal to him to build a bowling center or to open a bowling center in Atlanta in his name. Mm -hmm. And that uh, would be uh, Holyfield Lanes. We found a building, an old Zares building that was closed. And I worked with a team of accountants and real estate brokers and myself doing the marketing. We did all the research and everything and got him to the table. And he had his first fight with uh, Riddick Bow and, and uh, didn't win. And, you know, the rest is history. history. We didn't have the bowling center. <laughs> as much as he liked the book, because you know when he built his new home, he put a bowling uh, he put bowling lanes in his house. Okay. He called me. I just wanted to talk to you about bowling lanes. Which one should I put in my house? I said, in your house. <laughs> you know. But, well, uh, you know, they have them in the White House. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, but the rock can't bowl. Yeah. But Evander could bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Evander Holyfield could bowl, I'm telling you. Well, uh, Barack can. I think that if he puts his mind to it, he would. Well, be able to Lois, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you slide on that one. Anytime you shoot a 37, Lois, come on. You can shoot a 37 with, 
<laughs> Excuse me, with your eyes closed. Well, I mean, yeah, we're going to give Barack some time. Yes. <laughs> we'll give him some time. Maybe we can give him some pointers. Maybe we can bring him to Cincinnati and, get, and, and educate him on, on bowling and, and maybe up his game a little yes, bit. <laughs> I think we can. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But it is uh, uh, just a, a fantastic uh, uh, thought to know that black people, little known, were so involved and still are in the sport of bowling. And again, it's something it's like cycling. I tell, tell people about cycling when I mention, oh, cycling, who, who, nobody does it. Major Taylor in 1899 was the world champion cyclist in 1899, beat everybody in the world, a black man, in spite of all the challenges. You look at the National Bowling Association, they say, well, you can't bowl in white houses. You can't be a member of the American Bowling Congress. No, you can't go on a professional tour. What do they do? Did their own thing. Well, and that's what the, it's all about. Uh, Black Sports Magazine was the uh, first uh, group, and yeah, and I think you were still active when we had the first uh, Rodman in uh, in New York mm -hmm. at Madison Square Garden. I remember you guys talking about that. I wasn't there, but I remember. I remember Ruth and others talking about the Rodman yeah. tournament being. Yeah. Now, who was that named after? Uh, uh, the Bill, Rod Bill Rodman. Bill Rodman. Was he a professional uh -huh. bowler? Okay, black professional mm -hmm. bowler. Out of Chicago. Wow. Mm -hmm. Along with uh, Fuller Gordy, yeah. who was Barry Gordy's brother mm -hmm. out of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Man, what memories, yeah. what history, and what significance uh, uh, that we have in, in the sport of bowling, but, in spite uh, of all the barriers. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So what jumps out at you now as far as where you sit right now, I mean, you look back, you can see a lot that you've done. You can see a lot that has happened. Uh, your involvement since 1955. Lois, you know how long that is? How, how, how many years that is? What, about 54 now? But uh, what what jumps out at you first, at your first thought in terms of looking back and, and looking right now because you're still involved? Well, uh, that the uh, youth would take a, a more uh, interest in the game of ten pin, mm -hmm. and that our uh, educational part that we have, like the junior program, yeah. and with them being involved, you know, you get your education and also you participate yeah. in a sport mm -hmm. that is wholesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember yeah. them stressing the education side. It wasn't just a recreational kind of thing where mm -hmm. our kids went and just to hang out. I remember the junior uh, uh, administrators used to really stress, you got to get your education. And, and we, have, we have to change with times because uh, when we had the junior bowlers before, uh, we trained them, we sat down, we had to yeah. teach them how to keep score. Mm -hmm. uh, now now we need... <laughs> <laughs> the computer does it, right? Yes, the computer yeah. does it, but nobody knows how those scores come up. Mm -hmm. Even the adults now mm -hmm. don't even know how to don't keep, know how to keep score. score. Yeah, I remember the little yeah. plastic sheet we used to use to yeah. mark it down ourselves uh -huh. and the pieces of paper we had to use and everything. Th times have changed, but I, I, I think that we've changed uh, with the times. We've done some things, like we say, we've seen the evolution of the National Bowling Association come from Toledo to New York, and now it's here in Cincinnati. And if people want to stop by to see the office, it's right out on, uh, uh, I don't know the address. Do you know 99 the number? 9944 Reading Road. 9944 Reading Road. There's a blue sign right out there that says National Bowling Association. Stop by and just say hello. And uh, 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 just know that uh, the, the office is here in Cincinnati. Ruth, it's been a pleasure. we got about a minute and a half left. And I just want to thank you again for allowing me to come into your home and to share some memories about the National Bowling Association and then to inform our public about the significance of bowling and its relationship and connection to the city of Cincinnati. So I really appreciate you doing this. It didn't hurt at all, did it? It didn't hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, till the next time, this is Jim Klingman. Uh, eavesdropping on the elders as we did here over the past hour. Check us out the next time when we bring you another elder in our city of Cincinnati. But uh, make sure that you spread the word about this particular show because Lewis Wilson has done significant work in bowling and in the city of Cincinnati that you and others need to know about. So until the next time, this is Jim Klingman signing off once again for Eavesdropping on the Elders. Thanks a lot, Lewis. Thank you. All right.